Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Lightroom presets today, and I'm going to contradict things I've said in the past quite a bit, but I feel like this topic does need to be discussed. Let's just get on with the video. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video, and as I said, today's topic of discussion is Lightroom presets. Now, if you like to edit photos like myself, then you probably use Lightroom quite a lot, and this is a topic for debate. I'm going to be talking about presets in Lightroom. I'm going to have a bit of a discussion with myself and with you guys. Obviously, you can join in in the comments below. And I'm also going to show you a quick little editing method that I use to get a teal and orange look, which is a very, very popular look that produces a result that looks something a bit like this. Okay, so that photo, before we actually get into it, I didn't take that myself. It's off the internet that you can just download to practice editing on. And obviously, I've edited it. You've saw the before, you've saw the after, and that was not using any presets. I've never bought any presets. I've never downloaded any presets. I don't even know how to use Lightroom. I didn't know what half of these settings meant. Maybe two or three months ago, but obviously, that's what this video is about, why you should not buy presets and why you should learn yourself. I'm going to jump into the video, then I'm going to show you how you can create that effect. But let's just jump straight to why I believe you should not be buying Lightroom presets. Okay, so the first reason why I actually feel like Lightroom presets shouldn't be bought is that you're basically buying something that anyone can do. Like, fair enough if you want to buy something from a YouTuber. Obviously, most people that sell Lightroom presets are obviously creative people, photographers, YouTubers, so on, who want to sell their own product. If you want to buy something of someone that you support, buy some merchandise. I've got a Nightscape cap on. He's obviously a YouTuber. You might know him, you might not. I bought that because I like his content and I want to support what he does. But if he brought out Lightroom presets, I don't know if I'd buy them because it's not something that I can't do myself. I can actually use Lightroom and I can produce the exact same results providing I know what settings to change, what to actually adjust. So I feel like it's kind of taken away the creativity from yourself if you're actually buying something that someone else has put out there. I feel like it really does take away the creator's influence on their own work. And I feel like if you are buying something, it's just basically skipping the creative step, which is kind of the whole reason that we're actually photographers and obviously content creators. Now, the next big point why I don't feel like buying presets is the best idea is the price. Presets aren't cheap. Unless, if you buy one, if you buy one preset, then it would probably be cheap. But why would you buy one preset? Because one preset doesn't suit all scenarios. It doesn't suit all pictures. It doesn't suit every environment every landscape everything that you've recaptured through your camera it doesn't suit everything you cannot buy one preset and apply it to everything and it will look perfect it that just doesn't happen different photos need different adjustments so you've obviously got to buy quite a lot of presets if you want to cover every single basis which would cost an awful amount of money if you actually had to go and do that i've seen people selling presets like huge packs with hundreds of pounds and that for me is just not worth it, especially when you can learn this stuff yourself. Now, another thing I want to mention is presets aren't built for every single camera. You can have a different camera which will capture a completely different image to the person who's actually put them presets out there. Someone could be capturing all these images on a Canon camera and have these amazing presets for them. And then they sell them online, you buy them, you've got a Sony camera. And the image your camera produces compared to the Canon camera from the, just the raw image is so much different that the preset actually doesn't do your image justice. Now, here's the thing. You could go on a shoot with your friend. You could take it the exact same image. You could be in the exact same position, the exact same time, the exact same settings. However, you could have different cameras. One of you could have a Canon camera. One could have a Sony camera. You could just have different uh, models of the same brand. So you could obviously have like two Canon cameras, but completely different cameras. And it would produce different images. So then once you both apply that preset to the images you've took, the results will probably be different based on your camera. So presets aren't actually built for every single camera. Most presets are actually sold 
four cameras. So you'll see presets for Canon, presets for Sony, presets for, you know, any type of specific camera as well. There could be presets out there for the A7S Mark III, which has obviously just come out, or is it the A7R? I believe it's the A7R Mark III that's just come out. There could be presets for a specific camera. So that's why it's a money-making thing, because they can just produce preset after preset for different types of cameras. And in my opinion, once again, it's just skipping that creative process. And then the final reason is, this stuff is easy to learn. As I said, two or three months ago, I had no idea how to edit an image. I didn't even know what Lightroom was. I heard about it and I just thought all images are edited in Photoshop. That's how much of a beginner I was. But now I've got Lightroom, I know roughly how to use it. I'm still not great at using it, but obviously I know a bit more about the uh, program. And I know that this is how you do edit photos and it is very simple to learn. I mean, the platform that I'm making this video on right now, YouTube, go on YouTube, search whatever you want go and search a teal and orange look that's what i done to learn how to make this um image that i'm about to show you right now go and search how you do these things and they will be on youtube you'll learn very very quick and it just saves you money and it actually allows you to be a bit more creative and you can put your own spin on things okay so that's my reasons why i don't think you should buy presets and as i said i am very much a beginner on lightroom but what we're actually going to go and do now is we're going to hop onto lightroom and i'm going to show you how i edited that picture to produce that kind of result. So let's head on over to Lightroom right now. Okay, so as you can see, we're on Lightroom right now, and obviously I've reset all the settings. So we've got the original image right now. And um, the temperature, what you wanna actually do is you wanna change it to about 5,200. And then the tint, just leave the tint as it is, to be honest, just set it to zero. And that's obviously gonna bring a bit more warmth to the image, which is obviously orange. We're going for a teal and orange look. So that's what you need to do. Okay, so next thing you wanna do is you wanna set the exposure to about 0.2, just to bring the brightness up. And then the contrast to about 20, to obviously give a contrast between the uh, brighter and the darker parts of the image. Then obviously we're just gonna work through these settings here. You wanna drop the highlights, so drop the brighter parts of the images and obviously bump the shadows up, so bring up the darker parts. Then for the whites, what I done with this photo was I actually set it to about 15, and then obviously set the blacks to about negative 30, just to bring some of them darker images, mainly in the uh, trees, the bushes around the person, the character in this photo, just to bring them a bit down to obviously get a bit more of a contrast going on. Then clarity is probably my most favorite thing, to be honest, I actually bumped that up to about 25, 26. You can see it gives a bit more color, a bit more sharpness and a bit more contrast. So it's, it's a very, very useful tool to use. Now, uh, vibrance I actually set it to about 17 and then actually bring the saturation down to about 10 because you don't want to overdo it. And we're obviously going to play around with the saturation a bit later on. So you really don't want to overdo the saturation too early. But for the, you know, the first uh, couple of settings, the basic settings as they're called, we are done. Next thing we're gonna move on to is tone curve. Okay, next up is tone curve. Now what you wanna do is you wanna click that button there, which allows you to plot your own points on this tone curve. And basically what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and create a very, very subtle S curve shape. And you just play around with it so you can see what type of image you are producing. And I think that that's probably a bit too extreme. You just play around with this until you get a good feel for what you're doing. And I, I think I set it about there. So tone curve, as I said, you just tend to play around with it. That's what you do in this. If when you are learning how to use Lightroom, you just play around with everything until you feel like you've achieved a good setting. Obviously you don't do that for the entirety. You watch videos, you learn things. But for the most part, when you are a beginner, you just play around with settings and you'll kind of get a feel for what's right. Tone curve is done. Next thing is HSL. Okay, so HSL is hue, saturation, luminance. I'm sure you're aware of that, but if you are a beginner like I was a few months ago, you wouldn't have had a clue. So uh, for the hue, saturation, and luminance, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna really bring out the oranges. So we're gonna bump the red up to about 25, and then orange, we're actually gonna drop it down to seven because as I said before, you really don't wanna overdo it. Yellow and green, you actually want to really bring right down to negative 100 because as I said, you don't want the orange being too overpowering. Um, aqua, what we're gonna do with aqua is we're gonna bump it up to about 40 because obviously it's part of the blues. And then with the actual blue, we're just gonna bump it down to negative 10 because once again, you don't wanna overdo it. You don't want to blow out the image. Saturation, this is where you don't wanna overdo it mainly because obviously we set the saturation to negative 10 before, but we are gonna bump some things up bump the red up to eight, bump orange up to four. We're actually gonna set yellow and green to about negative 30 for the exact same reason as before. You want the orange to be the dominant color. 
Uh, aqua again we're bumping up and then blue we're bumping down the reason we're bumping aqua up and blue down is because it's more of a teal look rather than dark blue so obviously we're going to set them settings a bit different next thing we go to is luminance and this is where again we try to bring the orange out in the photo you're going to bump the red up to about 35 you're going to bump the orange up to about 20 yellow is actually going to come up for the first time and green is also coming up for the first time in this you're going to leave aqua and then we're just going to bump the blue up ever so slightly so if we actually stop where we are right now and take a bit of a look at what we've done so far what is going on there i just need to hit enter and then we're just going to take a look at the before and after so far there's the before and there's the after so as you can see we've brought a lot more detail into the photo and obviously you can really see that the photo is coming along nicely, especially in the sky and obviously the trees around the character. The sky is less blown out now. You, you can see a bit more detail to it. And then obviously the trees and the areas around on the floor, you can notice it is a lot more darker and a lot more detailed. So the photo is coming along quite nicely. Next thing we're going to go on to is split toning. Okay, so split toning is really where the teal and orange kind of comes out you don't want to overdo it though so what we're actually going to do is for the highlights we're going to set that to about 227 that just sets it in that teal kind of area and then the saturation you're just going to bump up to eight and then the same with the shadows you want that blue look so you're going to set it to 240 and again it's kind of in that same area of the blue the teal look and then the saturation you're just going to go slightly higher than the highlights because obviously the highlights are more overpowering as it is shadows are obviously darker and that's pretty much that for split tone and what we're going to go on to next is camera calibration okay so camera calibration is where you can really destroy your image you do not want to go too extreme with these values i'm just going to bring the tint down ever so slightly by 10 and then obviously you want that teal and orange look so you're going to want to bring the red primary towards the orange and you're going to want to bring the blue primary towards the teal so in terms of the red primary, we're going to bump that up to about 29. As you can see, it's going towards the orange. And you can see there the before and after. You can see that fella's t-shirt is really becoming a bit more orange. And then obviously with the blue, with the blue primary, you're going to bump that downwards towards negative 21 for the really teal look. And obviously now you can start to see that the teal in the sun, obviously the sun's glowing behind all the trees and the t-shirt is really nicely contrasted with the blue of the sky and the blue of the pants on the character in this photo so the photo is really coming along quite nicely now there's only one thing we've got left to do okay so the last thing we're going to do is go into the detail tab and this is just basically to reduce any noise really you want to bring luminance up to about 45 and then leave the detail as it is and same with color bring it up to about 45 and that's pretty much it that's the photo achieved so if we look at the before and after there's the before it's a really decent photo but obviously there's not too much detail going on there's not too much contrast and then the after you can really see the oranges come out the blue of the sky is much nicer because the blue was actually kind of blown out by the highlights and um, when the original photo was taken but now you can really see the blue and obviously now the emphasis has been shifted to the character because obviously the darker parts of the photo are the trees and the floor around them and the sunset is kind of just glowing through the back of the trees to make this image look really really nice that is all for this video so as i said i don't feel like lightroom presets are really necessarily something that you need to purchase more something you need to learn how to actually use the settings within lightroom so you can put your own creative spin on things take inspiration from what you see on youtube and to be honest the learning process isn't that difficult if you have found this video useful at any point be sure to let me know by slapping a like on the video comment down below and be sure to subscribe to the youtube channel if you are new around here also go and check out my social media accounts there will be links down below in the description Thank you all for watching guys, until next time, goodbye.